So throughout the history of music, we've had different ways of organizing it. Even some musical styles today don't use the Western musical notation that we're used to seeing. And some music isn't even written down. So if you want a brief history on Western music notation, I'll put a link down below and you can read up on it. But Western music notation as we know it today really didn't become a thing until about the 1600s when instrumental music became more popular than vocal music. So note notation is about length and action. Length basically meaning how long the note is taking up in space and action being are we playing a note, a pitch, or are we silent? So there's a few ways to notate. To keep things simple for now, we'll just use one pitch value on a staff. We're gonna use a G note, which is gonna be that fifth fret on your D string. It's gonna sound like this. And so we'll be adjusting pitch later, but for now, we're just gonna worry about that note. So with note heads, we can either fill in the note head so it looks like this, or we can leave them blank and it looks like this. Here's some common note values. We have whole notes, we have half notes, we have quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, 32nd, 64th, you see the pattern? So basically all these notes are derivatives of each other. So if I show you this, this is gonna be played with all downstrokes. So we're gonna play four quarter notes in a row with all downstrokes, and it's gonna sound something like this. Three, four, one. So if we have a grouping of eighth notes, we're gonna play those with a down up pick direction since there are two eighth notes within a quarter note. And it's gonna sound something like this. One, two, three, four. Oh, that pasta looks nice. And also the middle note on that staff is a B note, which is this note on the mandolin. That's just for reference. So a quarter note is the first note that has a stem on it. And that stem can go on the right or the left of that note head. So the stem direction and where it's placed on the note head depends on where it lies on the staff. So if your notes are below the middle line, then that stem is gonna go up. If your notes are above the middle line, your stem is gonna go down. And for most applications, if your note is on that middle line B, then your stem is gonna go down. So let's say we have these eighth notes right here. Some stems are going up, some stems are going down. What we wanna do if we wanna beam this together is we wanna take the note furthest away from that B line and use that stem for all of them. So for example, the F note is the furthest away from that B line. So we're gonna take that stem that's gonna be facing down and we're gonna make all of them face down and beam them together like this. Another cool trick, and we're gonna rehash over this later, is that our stem lines are actually gonna be an octave in length, and that's kinda of how we determine how long our stem will be. So if we took a G note, which is on the second line of the staff, and our stem is going up, that stem should stop on the next G note, an octave above. So it's gonna look something like this. Eighth notes actually have a flag on them. And so these, flags actually fly to the right always, no matter if your stem is pointing down or pointing up. And so for 16th notes onward, we add a flag for each subdivision. So if we're at eighth notes, we have one flag. If we're at 16th notes, we have two. And if we have 30 seconds, we have three, so on and so forth. So when we wanna combine notes that are of eighth note value or faster, we're gonna use a beam. So basically any note that has a flag on it, we can beam. So an eighth note has one flag, which means it's gonna have one beam. And so you guessed it, 16th notes are gonna have two beams because it has two flags. So the amount of flags on a note are gonna match the amount of beams it has. So we talked about note heads, which represent pitch length, right? But we also have silence to notate. And silence is music. Woo. So silence in music is like just as important as those notes. Both are gonna represent how we perceive music, musical melodies and ideas. 
So here are what rests look like compared to their corresponding note head values. Fancy chart, and I'm just cutting up stuff. Fancy chart is showing, and I'm just cutting up stuff. So we still have whole note rests, we still have half note rests, we still have whatever kind of rest you want to match the note heads that we have. Another way that we can affect the length of notes or rests is by giving them a dotted value. A dotted value adds half of the value of the note or rest. So for a dotted quarter note, we would have a quarter dot. <laughs> so if you have a quarter note that is dotted, all it's saying is we have a quarter note, then half of that value, which is an eighth note, tied together. So it'll look like this. Another example, for a dotted half note, we would add half the rhythmic value of that note. So it's a half note plus half of that, which is a quarter note. So you add those together and you have a dotted half note. So this works both for rests and note heads. If we want to have a dotted quarter note rest, it's going to be a quarter note rest plus an eighth note rest. And it's just that simple. It's just an easier way for us to read notation once we get to that point. It just kind of cleans up the sheet music. Things were pretty, uh, pretty simple there. Things are going to get a little bit more dicey. When we start putting notes on staff paper, we're going to start to combine them and make musical ideas happen. We have things like ties, which ties notes together of the same value or different values. And this is really all affected by bar lines and also the imaginary bar line, which is ooh, there but not there. So I noticed while editing my video and eating my leftover pasta that I really didn't differentiate between ties and slurs. This is kind of important. So ties just tie together the rhythmic value of notes that share the same pitch. While slurs connect different pitches and basically just tell you to play the phrase legato or smooth. And if you want to tie together two notes, make sure you're tying them together. So when you do use ties on two notes, make sure that you're doing it from note head to note head and not stem to stem. So you might be asking yourself what a bar or a bar line is. It's all confusing. Well, it's really simple. So it depends on our time signature. And the bar just lets us know how many notes we have, depending on the time signature. So if we're in 4-4, that means we're going to have four quarter notes, and that's going to be a bar. Or you can have eight eighth notes, and that will be your bar. And then at the end of that, we have bar lines that just basically mean we have a new bar to add more note values to. So when we beam notes together, we cannot go across the bar line, but we will get zapped from the heavens. And also, this means for the imaginary bar line, which basically just, if we're in 4-4, it splits the bar in half. It looks something like this. That we can't beam across that. So we have to be able to clearly see the downbeat of 3, or else music notation looks really, really sketchy when we try to sight read it later on. Basically, all these rules are just making it easier for us to see that sheet music so we can sight read or we can look at it and kind of decipher it before we even pick up the instrument. This sounds complicated, but once we start looking at a lot of sheet music and kind of getting used to seeing where that imaginary bar line would be and how music would look without it, trust me, you're going to love it. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. And slurs tie together... And slurs tie together... Pitch. <laughs> salt it? Did you salt it? Oh sea salt, baby. We're Italian here. The Mediterranean contains salt. Did you know that? While slurs tie together one note or multiple notes that don't that share different pitches. That's not how you say that. Order on, is that okay? Yeah. -da -da -da. While slurs tie, they don't tie together. Slurring is so when instrumental music became more popular. Oh, yeah. So with the ties and slurs, that's how slurs can do. Nope. 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 Nice.